welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this gorgeous look today was achieved using a new set of brushes and a palette from Blush Tribe that I didn't pay for. So, if you want to find out what this palette looks like, how come I got it without having to pay for it? And what I think of it and the brushes? Well then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, it's later on in the day than I planned to film. It's currently 25 past four. So there is a chance the hubby could arrive home from work while I'm still filming. We will see. Now, I'm sure I would have told you in the intro, but in case I didn't, I'll say it again now. The products I'm reviewing today, the uh, Sonia Zarine collection by Blush Tribe, their equivalent of a bridal palette, and these brushes with, look how stunning these handles are. I mean, just look. I didn't pay for these. These were sent to me by Blush Tribe for absolutely nothing. Um, I will tell you why as I'm going through the film, but I wanted to let you know that <clears throat> just because it's been sent to me doesn't mean it's going to change the way that I review the product at all. People who know and have watched for a long time will know. I'm a hopeless liar. I couldn't lie to you if I tried. Not that I ever tried, but yeah. So you will get the absolute 100% truth from me. I'm just splitting the brushes into sort of face brushes and eye brushes. So we've got a big brush here which could be used either for foundation or Although, given how loose it is, I'd, I'd probably use this as powder. Then we have blush brush. And a slanted one that you could use for contour. These are so soft. Another little... Well, what's, oh, hello. First loose um, fibre that I found. That could also be a blush brush, it could be a contour. And then, oh, this one could definitely be a contour brush. Look at the shape of it. That'd be great for if you wanted a proper sharp one. And then, in terms of eye brushes, we have either an eyeliner or a brow brush. A spoolie. These handles are just beautiful. They don't feel cheap either. They've they've got um, almost holographic. I don't know if it's holographic or iridescent. I think it's holographic because it's showing all the shades. Um, coating on the handles. I think it. No, I think it's more iridescent than holographic, but it's very very beautiful. Then you have two. Big fluffy blending brushes, one rounded, one flat topped. And then a medium. 
this is the what this is the, this is the kind of one with the super super long bristles that I would use right at the edges for buffing out if you need to really soften the edge of a look and then uh, a smaller like crease blending brush and then two flatter brushes I don't know what the size you can see okay so this could be a concealer brush and or this could be packing our colour onto the eye or it could be for both so I will be trying those when I'm applying the makeup today I'm just trying to put them in a pot so I can easily grab them um, they all have it's going to be easier to show you one of the bigger brushes they all have blush tribe on this sort of pewter coloured ferrule and they're, they're sensibly weighted as well, they're not too heavy at one end or the other, they do sit very nicely in the hand. So that is awesome. Let me just show you the inside of this because I haven't done yet. This is the equivalent of their bridal toned palette, which to me is stunningly beautiful. It's not one that I'd picked up myself, no. mainly because every time I had the money there was a different palette that I wanted more that had a brighter colour story. But I did keep looking at this thinking, oh that's so pretty, that is so pretty. I'm trying to get it so you can see it without it reflecting off of the packaging too much. There we go, that's probably the best shot I can give you. Right, this is still a teaching channel. So if I'm going too slow for you, there is a speed widget up there, feel free to use it. My face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Today I went for the Makeup Academy Pro Base Sul and Couth Stick. Because of Sul and Couth, Soothe and Cool. It's the dupe of the milk one which obviously we can't get very easily over here um, instant hydration in a stick once applied this formula leaves a cooling sensation on the skin perfect for reducing puffiness and soothing skin apply after cleansing morning and evening so after I'd use my usual moisturizer um, haven't put SPF on although I said SPF it's because I'm so used to saying moisturized SPF and primed um, because it's dark outside already so by the time I go out it's going to be even darker um, so I put my moisturiser on let that soak in and then literally as I sat down and started setting the camera up popped some of that on and then obviously my antiperspirant primer that I use details of which can be found in the film listed in the description box and continuing with my always telling you everything I do have a code with Blush Tribe I do not earn from it this is the only thing I've ever had sent to me from them right let's get you zoomed in I'm just going to talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded eyes because they have very very similar issues in terms of um, transference of colour onto the upper lid if you're cutting your crease you have to cut onto the upper lid rather than just through the socket and if you are using glitters even with a glitter glue you get bare patch right through the middle and I'm going to explain why um, the primer that I've got on <laughs> and went a little bit ham with today it has to be said is my Crow and Pebble this is blank page cotton this is my second pot and uh, as you can see I hope you can see from the shadowing uh, I'm, I'm making a very very good dent into this one but I have got my replacement ready pot number three um, I love this primer it goes on dry so you don't have to make that choice between setting your lids and being able to blend on them straight away or not setting them but maintaining the bright colour you get both of this 
Um, I do have a code for them. I don't earn money from it. I get pebbles, which I can use to offset against buying other items from their store. Again, full disclosure, all those details in the description box. Now, when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. So only if your upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line or, or part of that mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. This eye is still very, very swollen at the moment. You can normally see a little bit more of the lid. It's normally more like that. Uh, but I have had a tubular day migraine and I'm still feeling a little bit fuzzy today, which is why it's quite so late on in the day that I started to film. Um, if I cover my visible mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, space that tucks back away that you can't see. And if I cover the static lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid space there that tucks back away as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues with hooded lids, with the transference, etc. So, how do we work around this? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your static lid a new crease line. Now, obviously, this is going to reduce the space from your new crease and your brow. So either use slightly smaller blending brushes or um, just continue the colour right up to the brow rather than leaving a gap like I usually do. If you have deep set eyes like myself, what we have to do, whatever colour we're putting through our crease, usually the deepest shade, just every so often sit back and relax and just make sure that you've brought it up high enough that you can actually see it when, you're blend when your eyes are open. Right, it is time for me to get these beautiful white bristles dirty and try it out. This palette, um, it does have talc and mica in it if you're wondering, all the ingredients listed on the back. But as always, cruelty free, 24 months shelf life. Pretty damn awesome. Right. Oh, there's so much choice in colour. It's so beautiful. I'm going to go into Nushin, Nushan, which is this gorgeous peach shade to start with. Okay, I've got one loose bristle coming out of the brush. Oh no, it's not loose, it's just puffed up a little bit. Just a bit taller than the rest. I don't know if you can see that against my hair, possibly. And I'm going to start off, as usual, I hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on my eyes as possible, and I'm just going to start with circular movements. So, how come... Oh, these are so soft. If you're like me, and you have fibro, and you struggle with getting brushes soft enough. I can honestly barely feel this on my skin. It's so, so I think these are the softest brushes I've ever used. Softer than Spectrum, softer than Luxie, softer than Zoeva. By far the softest brushes I've ever, ever used. Wow. Sorry, I, I, I know I was about to tell you how I got sent this for free, um, but that really stunned me. If you struggle, because one of the issues with fibro is that your skin is super sensitive <clears throat> and the lightest touch hurts everywhere. It's like you've got sunburn over your whole skin plus gravel rash and then every time someone touches you it's like they're, tu they're, 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 they're using a cheese grater to touch your skin that's how my fibro feels anyway um, which is why normally I can only get <sighs> no, 
normally I can only get one look filmed a day because if I then try and take the makeup off to put it back on again my eyes are just too sore so that's why you'll very often see the same eyeshadow look in a couple of films so like I'll split um, <clears throat> you know if I'm doing a foundation review for example that's the second film I can do in a day or I'll do a um, a tag film or something this is just so lovely I'm really sorry if you heard the neighbours then they just it's one of the perils of filming later in the day they, they tend to get more and more vocal That has just blended on there so easily and so beautifully. But you saw how easily that blended out. Right, okay, I'm going to use a clean washcloth just to take any excess powder off because obviously I'm going to go into a different colour now. Right, so how come I got this? That's the only problem with white bristles, they don't stay white. <clears throat> I'm going to go into is that brown or is that burgundy? That's a burgundy. I think I'm going to go into Halima, which is a green, but it's a very, very pretty sort of foresty green. I quite like it. So, how did I get sent these? I ordered the Layla palette from Blush Tribe. And when it arrived, one of the shades was damaged. It wasn't too bad, it was just one corner had broken. Well, if you can say corner in a round pan. Um, now, obviously, you heard me tap off because I wasn't sure how deeply pigmented this was going to be and yet it's still blending really beautifully without too much of an issue at all but I will dip back into the pan and build it up a bit more I think yeah so the Lola arrived and it was damaged on arrival which is really unusual I'd never had that with any of her previous orders um, because they're always so so well packaged so I messaged her to let her know um, that it had broken and sent, just sent her a photo so she could see what it looked like. Um, and she replied back very, very quickly, especially considering it was a weekend as well. I mean, you know, come on girl, you need a life as well. Um, and she messaged back and she was so apologetic and she's like, I really don't know how that happened. I said, yeah, I said, it's your usual, you know, normally it's not an issue with any of your things that arrive. Um, so I was, that's why I wanted to let you know. And she said, well, um, I can send you um, like a pre-postage label and you can send it back and I'll send you another one. Or um, I can work out the cost of that one broken pan and um, refund you. Or and I'm like, no. Love, that's, that's not why I messaged you, it's really not that much of an issue. Um, it's only a little bit of the pan that's cracked, you know, barely anything at all. The reason that I let you know is because it's so unusual to have your stuff arrive broken. I was worried that maybe you'd got a batch that hadn't been pressed quite as firmly and it was just to give you a heads up because um, Layla had been out of stock for a while and it had just come back in and that was when I bought it. I said it was just to give you a heads up so that if you have got an issue with it and you do suddenly get an influx, you might want to get just that shade pressed so you can just send people out a replacement shade. And she's like, oh my goodness, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you not to, you know, expect anything back, but just to let me know there's an issue. <clears throat> I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it's really not that much of an, it's, it's really not that deeply broken. Um, I went a bit heavier this side, so now I've got to deepen this side up as well. 
um, and she she replied back later and she said oh that's really is so so sweet of you thank you so much so far yours is the only one so hopefully it was just a you know maybe it was the first one off of the, the press or something or the last one off of the press or maybe your postman decided to dance on it you know <laughs> she didn't say that but you know what I mean um, and she said to me goodness you've got a lot of my palettes haven't you I said yeah the only ones I haven't got really um, is the Sonia one the oh god what was the bright coloured one that I actually did I can't think but it was another collab with someone else um, had lots of bright blues in it uh, I said I've got all of the loose pigment shades that I want because obviously um, I've got loose pigments from other <coughs> indie brands so I don't need like two neon yellow pigments because the neon yellow is it. Um, and she said, yeah, I thought so. She didn't, uh, you've always been such a supportive customer. You've bought so much from me. I'm like, well, that's because I like the quality of the stuff that you produce. Otherwise, I wouldn't keep buying it, would I? Um, <laughs> next thing I know, two days later, a package arrives from Blush Tribe, and I'm like, didn't think I had anything on it. And I opened it up, and in there was this palette and these brushes with a little note saying, just a little thank you. And I was, I, I absolutely burst into tears. I just thought that was so sweet of her. So, so, so sweet. I really wasn't expecting it at all. Um, you know, I, I literally had just been advising her in case she, she suddenly found she had a whole influx of them, you know? Right. Um, I'm going to go back into the Nushin shade, which is the peach. Just see if I can, because I've gone a little bit heavier with the green than I intended. So I'm just going to buff with some peach where the two colours meet, just to soften them up a little bit. So I messaged her and I'm like, oh my goodness, it's just arrived, thank you so much, that's so sweet of you. She's like, it's really no problem. Um, you know, and that's, that's one of the things that I love about dealing with indie companies. You're not just a figure on a sales sheet at the end of the day. You know, you've purchased something. Most indie companies, especially when they first start, because I bought one of her first ever palettes, I bought the Psychedelic palette, which was before she started, um, I think that was more of a, a private labelling job, that one. Because it's not the same quality as the stuff that she's producing now. But it was still one of my favourite palettes when I bought it because it was still good quality. Um, so, you know, it's one of the things that I love about dealing with indie brands is that you are dealing with a person, not a corporation. And, you know, if you do have issues, it's a person you're speaking to. It's not someone in customer service who has to follow X, Y and Z and say, you know, can't deviate from what they've been told. So it's just so, so sweet of her, it really is. Um, and it's, you know, it's one of the reasons that I've bought so many palettes from her. Because I have got an awful lot of Blush Tribe palettes. Um, and a lot of their pigments too. Because I just, I love the quality, I love the colour stories of the palettes. But also, I know that if there is an issue, Selma's just, she's just there, you know. She, she will sort issues for you and make sure you are 100% happy. You know, she's just such a lovely, lovely girl, she really is. Okay, I'm really liking this look. 
I was going to go in with a deeper colour through the crease, but I'm not sure it needs it. <clears throat> but I'm going to go through with it anyway. Because I can't just use two colours, I need to use more. <laughs> Look at my poor pristine white brush, it's not... It's not beautifully pristine white anymore. Never mind. Hopefully when I do the deep clean it will come back to... They never come back to as white as they were when you first got them. But, you know. But I'm going to dip into Aisha. Which is the burgundy shade. I'm just going to buff that just through the outer crease. I'm not going to go very far in. I just want to deepen up this outer corner just a tad seriously though these brushes I'm gonna have to message Paige from Seeking Alexandria because she has fibro like me and I know she struggles a lot with how things feel on her skin I must let her know about these I might dip into a little bit of a neater, which is a deeper green. Just for the... Yeah, that's nice. I like that. And just run that through as well. It's just to ever so slightly deepen up the outer edge. I think you can see the difference that that gives you. <clears throat> I'm going to enjoy playing with this palette. This actually arrived um, before Christmas. But I had so many collab films that I needed to film that I just didn't have time to film with it. And it's been sitting here and I've been wanting to play with it and wanting to play with these brushes and I'm like, no, I need to use them on film the first time because I know they're not going to be you know, even if I cleaned them, they're never going to be quite this white ever again. I'm just like, oh, I really want to play with them. Because they've been sitting in my Jeffree Star drawer. Of course, every time I went in to go and get a Jeffree Star palette out, I'd see it sitting there, tempting me. I'm like, oh, I want to play with it now. And now I'm finally getting to play with it, and it's lovely. It really is. Um, and I've noticed that Selma on her Insta, she's now engaged, so congratulations. I wonder if she'll use this palette on her wedding day. Because this is when it was launched, I'm pretty sure they said this was their, or this was her sort of bridal type palette. And if you look at the design on the front, it very much looks like... A bridal outfit that she's wearing. Now, normally, when you do the circular movements like this in both directions, it gently moves the skin on your eyelids around, so you don't end up with any white bits. However, on this side, I've got super deep creasing just here, so you can see it does leave me with that textured um, striping. And when I, it won't be too much of an issue at the moment because I'm about to put some um, shimmer over the top but I am going to have to stretch that lid out because otherwise what happens is that the shimmer packs loosely into that crease rather than being blended on and then as um, as it as it dries and then I'm moving my eye I get cascades of it coming down which even though this is the eye I'm blind in it's still not good to have powder cascading into your eye Right, let's grab one of these pretty little flat brushes. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Where did I put my squirty thing? Where did I leave it to? I'm such a tot. Oh, there it is. 
I've moved everything around on my desk and do you think I could see it? It's because I put it in a pot to try and keep it tidy. Right, this is not actually wet and wild primer water anymore, but I love the spray. I doubt you could even see that. Um, this was one of those makeup obsession um, <clears throat> sprays. It's got like the mica in it that really sort of, which is okay, but the first time I ever tried it, good lord. This is just a pad with micellar water, I'm just going to tidy the edges up while I'm chatting. Um, yeah, I um, I tried that as a setting spray, or a finishing spray, and it just looked like I'd been farted on by a fairy. There was glitter everywhere, it was in my hair, it was on my clothes. I literally had to go and get changed and wash my hair and take my face off and start again. Thank goodness I wasn't actually going anywhere in a hurry that day. Right. But what I did, I let all the mica and stuff settle to the bottom of the pot and then poured it into here because I really like the spray on this. But never go into a press pigment with a wet brush. I've said that to you many, many times. Uh, I'm going to start off by going... So pretty. Right. I'm going to go into. Don't want to go into Sonia. Don't want to go into Ruby. I think I'll go into Sonia. Oh, that Parveen looks pretty. Yep, I'm going into Parveen. So I'm just going to pack some of this shimmer onto both sides of the brush. Like so. And then I'll wet the shimmer. Um, I always dry the ferrule off, which is this bit here. The easiest way to do that is just tuck it into the crease of your knuckles and spin because you don't want moisture getting down here and loosening the glue otherwise you won't have a brush anymore. Right, I've got a little mirror I'm going to look into down here so that you can still see what's going on up there. And I'm going to start off with this in the inner corner. I don't tend to do cut creases the first time I use the shimmers because I like to see the opacity of them because some shimmers have opacity some are designed more as toppers and I like to find that out before I start doing cut creases I like to see whether they can cover the mat and that uh, that's covered it beautifully I'm just going to dry the brush off on the washcloth and go back into Parveen to do the other eye. So, we now do the brush. Dry the ferrule. I'm just going to have to unfortunately stretch the lid out but you saw I didn't do that the other side because I don't need to so if you don't need to pull your eye out please don't if you do need to pull it out like I do literally only pull it out far enough you stretch the skin out, don't pull it out to your ear roll and let go as soon as you possibly can. There, that's lovely. Right, clean that off the brush and choose what other shimmer I want on the other part of the lid now. Now, the question is do I go down the pinky route or do I go down the green route? I think you all are going to be able to guess the answer to this one, aren't you? 
need to just which shade of green I use. Oh, actually, on camera, they don't look that different. Oh, they do when you swatch them. Okay. This one's like a, a goldy green, and this one's more of a pure green. So I think I'll go into Sabrina, which is the pure green. One of the things that you will notice with me is that I always clean my palettes before I put them away. Because I did get a comment from someone once about, you say that's one of your most used palettes, it looks perfectly clean, it's like you've never used it. Yes, that's because I clean it before I put it away, because if I pick up a dirty palette, <clears throat> I don't feel inclined to use it. I don't feel inspired to use it. So I always clean as much as I can. Obviously, if it's got a white casing, you kind of fight a losing battle, but I clean off as much as I can. Right, let's pop this green onto the middle part of the lid. Wow. And then just use the tip of the bristles just to smudge those two colours together. And then do the same at the edge there just to smudge it into the... Wow, that's so pretty. can see why this is the bridal palette, I really can. Not the traditional UK bride, although I did have purple on my eyes, but then I was wearing a purple wedding dress, so and bright red lipstick. I wanted to look like me on my wedding day, I didn't want to look like every other bride. And I also found that by doing my own makeup it kept me calm on the day. Whereas I think if I'd been just sitting there with my hands doing nothing, I think I would have absolutely ended up crazy. I would have gone into bridezilla mode, I think. Where I was just sitting there doing my own makeup, chatting to my bridesmaids as they arrived. It was just, it was a really lovely, chill morning. Morning before her wedding. The uh, Toastmaster couldn't believe how calm I was. He also couldn't believe the amount of admin that I'd got ready for him. It was like, when we got, because obviously I got ready at the hotel, so that there was room for all of the bridesmaids to arrive. So we could get some good photos of all of us getting ready together. And... Uh, That's so lovely. And then when we got back to the hotel after the church, I said to the Toastmaster, right, here's the room key. In the room there is a box. In the box <laughs> there are the cards for Chris's speech. And there's also a card for you telling you which gift comes out when. And it also tells you what shape the gift is, because I had the same wrapping paper for everything. I had special wrapping paper done. Um, I said, so if you could go and get that, please, that would be awesome. And he just looked at me and he went, you do realise that this is what you're paying me to do, right? And I'm like, yeah, but admin. Yeah, that's just tidy up. I always get a little bit more full out this side because this eyelid is a lot more loose because it got pulled around so much when I was a kid at the hospital. Right, I really am liking that. Okay, I'm going to pause you, I'm going to lob some foundation on and base products and stuff and I'll be back to finish the eye look off with you. Now, for me, I've got to wait to talk to you again till I press record, but for you my darlings, it's going to be instant. Hey, I am back. Right, got me my flat top brush that I always use <clears throat> and I'm going to pop it into Aisha. which is the burgundy, I'm just going to run that just along the lower lash line here I 
I always flinch this side because obviously being blind in the side I don't have any peripheral vision. And the viewfinder is quite a long way off. So I'm kind of relying on muscle memory to not poke myself in the eye, which is not always successful, as long-term viewers will know. <coughs> right. This brush was from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, but I love it because it's flat-topped, but it's chunky. So it's great for getting up underneath the lower lash line. And I am going to go into, uh, I think, Nushin, the peach that I used first time. And just use that just to soften the lower lash line. One of the things that I, that I love about Blush Tribe formula is obviously they're designed to be used on people with way more melanin in their skin than I have. So you really do get pigmentation with them. You know, even the pastel tribe has got some gump in it, which I love. That is so pretty. Why didn't I buy this palette earlier? Thank you so much for sending me this, Sam. Really, thank you. Right, this is a lip brush that I bought from eBay years ago. I'm just going to go into Shazia and just pop that up under the tail of my brow. Just to give it a bit of a bit of a lift there. Oh, I don't know if you can see, but right there, I've got one of those angry, won't come up to a head, red cystic bump spots right in my brow. It is so painful. I'm going through a hormonal stage. I've got those breakout on my chin, which is thankfully finally starting to clear up. This is so pretty. Regular viewers know I do the inner corner and then I like to bring it under the tear duct and just blend it into the colour under the eye because I think that just finishes it off nicely. That is so pretty. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to pause you one last time while I choose a highlighter, bung some of that on, do my mascara, choose a lipstick and I will be back with my final thoughts and my finished look. So, uh, don't go anywhere. I am back. Okay, uh, bronzer was my butter bronzer in shade bronzer. The blush that I used today was this Jouer Adore Blush Duo, and I used the deeper side Adore Me. Highlight I used was this Hojo blush shade 3 which looks like it's the Amrezy blush even though it's obviously not gold it's white but it's got the same kind of ripples across the pan that I got from uh, Aliexpress mascara is my Catrice Glamondol volume mascara dupe for bad girl bang but it's cheaper and it's waterproof and lipstick is the NYX suede bullet lipstick in lavender and lace so what do I think of these these are by far the softest brushes I have ever ever used I think they're either 20 or 25 quid for this set on her site. Well worth that price. These are so soft. I literally could barely feel it on my skin when I was blending. And I've never had brushes feel that soft. And like I said, I've got Spectrum brushes. I've got Zoeva. I've got Luxie. I've got high-end brushes. 
and these are by far the softest that I've ever used. Uh, the palette, as always with Blush Tribe, beautiful pigmentation, easy blending, lovely shimmers, fantastic colour story. Uh, I am going to very much look forward to playing with this palette quite a bit because this year I'm determined I'm going to do better with not buying as many palettes because this does depend on how many palettes the indie companies that I follow release because every time they release one I seem to buy it. Yeah, but I absolutely adore this palette. Uh, it may not be what you would think of as a bridal palette, but it's a stun. Actually, I've done very similar to the eyes on the front of this. They've done burgundy and green. I did peach green and a little bit of the burgundy. Still think she looks better though. But I can thoroughly recommend that along with all of the other Blush Tribe palettes that you have seen me use on my channel. So, I hope you found that helpful. I hope you found that interesting. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. You are still being culled by YouTube. Seems like the culling of last year is continuing into this year. Oh, sorry, I've got a really itchy nose today. Pollen must be up. And if you are new to my channel, I completely lost my train of thought there, did you notice? Did you see the fibro fog just come down and go, those words you were going to use? I'm going to take them. Right, if you're new to my channel, I really hope you enjoyed this. I've got a lot of other films you can watch if you're not sure. But if you have decided you quite like listening to this mad bird witter away about makeup, amongst other things, then it'd be awesome if you hit that like button and join the 4F family because we are the nicest family on YouTube. Right, all that remains, my darlings, for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.